Good morning, this is Bill from the Upside of Downsizing. What you're looking at was our previous water spigot, uh, water source for the RV. And this is our well connection right here, coming up to a three quarter inch galvanized pipe going to a hose bib. So what we've done is since we moved the RV all the way down there, we needed to put in a new water line. So yesterday we went out and got some parts and started working on it. And I wish I had done some video, but I didn't. I was a little busy on it. So what we have down here is a one and a half inch PVC stub out. And this is from the original water source. And that's a uh, one and a half inch threaded PVC uh, cap right there. So I'm going to remove that cap. I have a one and a half to th one and a half inch female thread reducing bushing that's going to go down to three quarter inch with a female thread on it. And I'm going to put a uh, three quarter inch PEX male adapter right in to this. Then using three quarter inch PEX hose, which is the blue line you see here. I'm going to attach that. We're going to trench and bury it all the way down to the trailer. And we're using PEX because I got, I was able to get a pretty decent price on a 300 foot roll. PEX is certainly capable of being used outdoors if buried. And uh, the nice thing is, is we're going to have about a 150 foot run of pipe with no connections on it. So that'll be a very good thing. So if there's ever any leaking going on, besides the fact that perhaps uh, someone digs into it, but uh, if there were any mechanical leaks, so to speak, it would only be right here at the source or at the termination. So, okay, so here's some of the things I'm using to run the water line. This is a uh, PVC cutter. It'll do up to an inch and a half PVC, schedule 40, but it also cuts PEX pipe real well. Then this is a PEX crimp tool. I'm sorry, a pinch tool. There's two different kinds of tools for PEX. One is called a crimp tool and it uses a copper ring. And the other is a pinch tool and it uses these type of fasteners here. These are stainless steel and they are more expensive there than the, than the copper crimp uh, rings. They're, the benefit of them is that the tool is smaller and is less expensive than the, uh, than the crimp tool. The crimp tool, if you buy a good one, is going to run around 60 or 70 bucks. This one is uh, ran 20 bucks. The rings are a little more expensive. The positive, the good point about these rings is you can remove these without a special tool. You would just have to cut this tab here and pry it up with a pair of needle nose pliers and you can get it back off. If you use the crimp, crimp rings, uh, you need a special tool to get those crimp rings off. And the reason you'd want to get it off is because you'd want to recover your fitting, your brass fitting, uh, if from which... Uh, the PEX fittings, which are not cheap either. You can get these in plastic, but I figured for our water line, we really only needed about four fittings, and I would much prefer to have uh, buried in the ground the brass as opposed to uh, the plastic. Plastic would be okay, I guess, if you were running uh, all interior water lines in a house. But for what I'm doing, I just wanted to spend a little bit more and get that. So what's going to happen is this adapter here is going to allow us to adapt from the inch and a half water line down to a three-quarter inch PEX. There's the 300-foot uh, roll or what's left of it that we got. And then this brass fitting just slips into the end. The crimp ring goes, or the pinch ring goes over that and then you pinch it shut with the tool. And I'll show you how to use that when I'm ready. So here's the problem. You dig the ditch and the sand keeps falling right back in. If you look closely at the sides, as we dig, the sand just keeps refilling the ditch. 
So all we can do is really go three or four feet and then quickly bury it and then get back to digging. Almost there. We've done about, I guess about 60 feet. This morning it's taken maybe about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. It's just slow going because you got to develop a technique. And we finally have, Yvonne digs the trench to establish the root. And then I get into the trench from behind it, dig like a dog. What else is new? And then uh, put the uh, pecs in and cover it as we go. So we'll smooth it out when we get done. There she is, hardest working lady on YouTube. Okay, so we have the water feed exposed and there's been a slight change in plans. Although that is a threaded male adapter with a threaded cap on it, I have enough room on this piece of PVC right there to cut it off and then use a one and a half inch slip coupling. And what that'll allow me to do is take my one and a half inch to three quarter inch adapter, glue that in here, and then glue that on. And the only reason I want to do that is uh, I want to avoid torquing. I want to avoid torquing this pipe at all cost. So uh, cutting it with my small little hacksaw right here with a metal blade on it will give a clean cut and minimal amount of torque. So the first thing we have to do is shut off the water and open up the hose line and drain as much water out as possible. Ready. Okay. So I'm going to use a little battery powered sawzall and I'm going to cut this as close to this joint as possible. So another thing I learned is from a guy on YouTube, Back to Basics 101, he's in the Badlands, and he always uses a little tool tray to carry what he needs to the job site, and I've started doing that about a week ago, and I gotta tell you, it's really convenient. It lets you carry everything, keep everything off the ground, and have everything at your fingertips. So I'm just gonna clean this up, do a quick little test fit. So this is my one and a half inch slip coupling. That's gonna go around there. I'm gonna glue that on, and then this slip will go inside here, and our pecs will attach to this. So let me get it glued up. The glue I'm using is a one-step, so the primer is built into the glue, and the uh, it's also a wet-dry product. It's kind of like rain or shine from Odie which can be used for, for irrigation. So I'm just gonna make sure I get both the coupling. And the pipe covered with the glue. This is not super fast drying. Put it on here, give it a twist. 
and get it to seat all the way all the way on. I'm going to give that a second to dry. I've already installed the three quarter inch male PEX adapter into this slip adapter. I did use a fast tape, which is a Teflon tape with a little bit higher Teflon content. Wrapped it around two or three times around the male threads and threaded this in so that's good and secure. And using the same gluing technique, I'm just going to glue that in. I'm going to ask my camera assistant to hold that for me. Thank mm -hmm. you. That was stupid. I needed to glue the inside, not the outside. So this will get a little messy, but it's going to work. So that's that. It doesn't look very good, but I'm not going to touch it because if I try to wipe that off, it'll just make it a bigger mess. It'll be fine. So I'm going to let that successfully dry 10 minutes or so. And then uh, we'll be able to make our PEX connection. These are the pinch clamps. This part of the clamp fits into this portion of the tool right here. And then you squeeze it together until it releases. The tool will not release until it's been pinched the whole way. Make sure you're down on it. You want the clamp to be between a quarter and an eighth of an inch from the end of the hose. That's it. Okay, connection made. Okay, after giving the glue about 15 minutes to cure, uh, we turned on the water here at the main, just un enough to fill the lines and to check for leaks, and everything looks really good. Uh, no leaks, everything's dry, all the connections going right into the RV are working as they should. This uh, glue will have a, few, a full strength in about 24 hours, but uh, I'm not too concerned about leaving the water on, quite frankly. So what I'm going to do now is open up the valve a little bit further. We have, some people might be concerned that this 150 foot run of three quarter inch pipe might cause a dramatic drop in our water pressure. But the fact is we have over 100 PSI coming out of our main feed from the well. It's a tremendous amount of water pressure. And our RV can actually only handle about 45 PSI. So we have a, re uh, a water pressure reducing valve on the end of the spigot. And right now with the main valve open just a hair, as you can see, it's only open just a little bit. That gauge is already is still reading uh, 40 pounds. So when I open this up, it'll go to the 45 pounds that I have it set at without a problem. And we'll maintain the same water pressure we had when the RV was parked 20 feet from the water source. So this is the other end of the water line that you just saw us install. And this is directly behind the trailer. And we're gonna make our trailer connection from here up to the trailer water water supply line. So this is three quarter inch galvanized pipe going down to a galvanized T. And that T has a male PEX fitting on it, similar to what you saw me install on the other end of the water line, as well as another PEX uh, male on this side with about a 12 inch piece of PEX tubing with a plug installed. So if we ever needed to, we could just dig up that tail, that little pigtail, snip off the uh, plug and then continue the run with a PEX coupling. So that's about it. We're gonna fill up this uh, trench, which Yvonne is already doing right now. And we, if you have any questions about the water supply line or anything else, let us know. We thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.